The voice of Husker Nation is on the air. This is Hale Varsity Radio. Insight, opinion, expertise, along with the biggest names talking Nebraska sports. Join in with the show at 402-489-1240 or 1-800-825-5865. Now, here are your hosts, Chris Schmidt and Elijah Herbel. Welcome to it. Great to be with you on a Friday. It's Hale Var City. We're powered by Cornhead Lager, Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal, and you. Get to the starting five shout outs here in a moment. What did you do with the old camera? Different angle. We're going from the right side today. If you're watching on the stream, Hale Var City YouTube. Elijah, did you just uh, switch it up because. It's camp season or what? Uh, I found it like this. Uh-huh. Uh, I did make some adjustments to get the angle a little bit better. Um, but I found it like this, and I couldn't quite figure out how to put it back in its old perch. I'm not sure if a uh, component was broken while I was away or if I'm just an idiot. But uh, this is what we're rolling with for now. It's a slightly different angle. We'll see how the people feel about it. It definitely looks very different in the stream it, it feels weird <laughs> it, it is because usually there's kind of the the uh the drone look it's it's more of a, an up top shot but hey we'll deal with it it looks a little less up close and personal a little more distance a little zoom out on the on the mustache anywho we'll uh get into some thoughts from the quarterbacks today all three spoke to the media, and uh, Dylan Raiola will hear from Dylan on how camp is going here in just a moment. Coming up this hour with Hale Bar City Radio, Ben Butenbach going to be with us, uh, former Husker and uh, Butenbach Chiropractic. But great NIL opportunity to help fundraise for Husker Baseball, the football fundraiser tomorrow night, of course, with that open practice. Many of you are going to go and check out the Big Red. Uh, that'll be uh, outstanding. But Ben Buten back with us here in about 15 minutes. We'll say hi to the polar bear, Nash Hutmaker, uh, or sit down with him from earlier this week at 440. In hour two, Bride of Fairbury, uh, the professor, Bill Dolman, with us. And then before we get into the weekend, some thoughts and uh, commentary. The week that's been from he's imaginary, he wears red, Clausburn. Going to be with us at 540. Numbers to dial up, 489-1240. 489-1240, 800-825-5865, or email chris at halevarsity.com. So, I owe you another steak and a beer, clearly, yeah. last night. I'm on a hot the, streak. The, the overs hit. The Texans did not. And uh, Caleb Williams got to watch, which sucked. I was anxious to see what he looked like yeah. a little bit. Welcome to preseason football. And also... Death, I mean, taxes, and the Hall of Fame game being rained out. Monster remember, storms roll through Canton every year. Not every year, but I seem to remember, two where the game just punted the ball game. Remember two years ago, whenever they, it got painted out, they used the wrong paint on the field? And it led to like a safety concern because the paint didn't dry and was sticky and was like going to cause an issue for footing anywhere Toxic. they painted the field. Like they had issues with that. Mm. Something about the Hall of Fame game has been cursed in the past couple of years. And no, I'm not just talking about the Broncos playing it in a couple couple seasons ago. Uh, yeah, no, disappointing finish, but at least football is kind of back. I mean, yeah. I, I don't think the next preseason game is still for another like week or so. So there's still plenty of time. But football's back. I win another stake in a beer bet. I'm on a hot streak. And uh, we'll see. do we have a stake in a beer bet for this afternoon? We'll find one. We'll find one, yeah. Because we're we're going to right. double down. Either it's a three stake and a beer bet losing streak for me, three uh, three match losing streak, or we, we get all back to even. Uh, or I'm, I'm in real trouble, and I will just buy you a, 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 an entire side of beef. I, I mean, it's, that's a deal I'll make. I'll make that deal. <laughs> no, I'm not saying <laughs> that's what it's going to get up to. Uh, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Elijah, what are you doing for dinner? <laughs> a lot, but you're not invited. <laughs> Bring over Bevo. Uh, Arlo is in. He is first. Says, happy Friday, fellas. Jeff Snitley is here, part of the Boulder Peace Treaty. 
Uncle Jimmy, back with us. Good to have you. Thanks so much. A little FAC says Uncle Jimmy. Moving on, Real Matthew. Uh, good to have you in, Matthew. Jack is here. Patrick, Mark in along with Shane. Shane in from Santa Cruz. Cliff, Cliff still doing it right down at Wilbur Check Days. And uh, Black Hills Brennan uh, is in from the Black Hills. Red Knight 79. Rain, yes. Wind, no. Make it stop. Jeff is here. The other Dave is here. And Roger. Roger, 36 days till the victory over Colorado. Roger is counting down. Three putt is here. Uh, Number 15, Tim Tebow in the house. We'll get there in a moment. Michael here. Mr. Erickson checks in. Eat beef. Elijah will be doing that uh, on my tab. And uh, Weston, along with Coach Brandon. Dustin is here. Uh, Normally on radio, uh, but jumping into the stream for the first time. Dustin, thanks for doing that. Sexy Grinch, formerly crew, says bad angle Elijah. I I thought my mustache looked better. If if crew can't tell it to you like it is, who can? (laughs) Yeah, thanks. Appreciate that, crew. (laughs) And Anonymous. Uh, wants to talk about Frank's first year. I went to a practice where the offense had over 50 snaps before getting a first down. <laughs> well, uh, one of the things I do want to get back to with this angle, I don't like the fact that it makes you look like a giant compared to me. Wow. I'm shorter than you in the stream, and I don't quite like that. It, it rubs my ego the wrong way. So <laughs> we might have to get some things adjusted. I could try to get the camera angled just a little we'll, bit differently. We'll, we'll work on it for the weekend. I'm not sure, if you, I'm not sure if you noticed. I did include the, the Texas mug is still here in the background. I moved it over to a new spot in the studio for the day. We're so going to ask old Ben. We're going to ask old Benny, our guest here, coming up in about ten minutes. What he thinks of the Texas mug? Well, it remains permanently upside down. So the, ho- the horns no, are constantly no, down, which I is. think is the consolation. I would never. You couldn't pay me enough to drink out of that. Not just because it's Bevo on the side, but that thing's been around for several several years. Possibly right after the Ricky Williams era. I mean, look at that thing. I mean, at one time, it may have been used as a spittoon and ashtray. Not because of the convenience factor, but just because it, it was Texas. So let's hear from one Dylan Riola, who uh, was in front of the media today. And first thing out of the gate, let's talk about that Mahomes and Riola buzz going on. And listen, he's not trying to be or act or conjure Patrick Mahomes 2.0. It was funny. I'm not on social media, so, I mean, it was my teammates showing me, and we were at a training table, and it popped up on ESPN. But it's pretty cool to to be preceded by a guy like Mahomes. I mean, probably going to go down as one of the greats. So um, it's cool. But, you know, honestly, our focus right now is to – you know, work on, work on our team and, and keep getting better in camp. So, um, you know, I don't want to get distracted from what we're here to do. Good day today. You heard from Riola. We'll hear more. Heinrich Harburg, uh, also uh, Glenn Thomas, and Danny K. Danny F and K. I love Kalen. That kid's awesome. Uh, not a kid anymore. He's in college. But you get my point. Good quarterback room for the Big Red on top of the other additions in there. And they're uh, they're working, man. And it's you know what day three of camp, but the bigger picture cut three here with with uh, Riola spring. All right, you, you got to college. You performed well in the spring game. You've got a certain aura about you that it factor. Uh, not only the physical skill set, but the the mental and and um, situational maturity. That all of that goes into, all right. The kid's got a rocket for an arm, and he can make throws, and he knows offenses, and he's played at high levels, Elijah. But will, will guys follow him? I love hearing from coaches and former players, because ultimately, you know, when, when no one's watching on Saturday afternoon, the, the the Monday through Friday grind really does endear you to your teammates. Do you like playing for or with that guy, and do you trust him, or do you tolerate him? And it seems to be not just with with Dylan, but all the quarterbacks, 
they're doing it the right way. And uh, obviously, I think uh, doing it the right way, you need to have that proof in the pudding by the time UTEP and Colorado mm-hmm. come around. Yeah. That's the, the big factor here. But kind of as, as Barney talked about yesterday, when you talk about limiting turnovers and even just learning the offense, becoming a better quarterback, it's about that mentality, that intentionality. He was kind of talking about the defense, but I think it mm-hmm. rings true for the offensive side of the ball as well, that like the intentionality, the the coach is really putting an emphasis on it. That um, And that was a, a big focus of the media session today was, was the turnovers. But like <laughs> yeah. um, that intentionality, you can see that it's there from these quarterbacks and that, no, it's, it's not necessarily just about learning the offense and getting comfortable. It's about learning the offense in a way that limits the turnovers and, and takes care of the football, which I think is a, a big factor as you look at these quarterbacks and I think p- particularly Ryle, the success that is possible in 2024. Three quarterbacks a season ago, 10 touchdowns, 16 interceptions. Just problematic. Problematic if you can't line up in a loaded box and still run for four. Most teams can't. Okay. And then if you got to try and be balanced, it, it, it really does uh, a disservice to your offense and clearly to your defense that was in enough ball games to win it for you. But back to that progress from spring to now. More from Dylan Raiola. I mean, the spring was kind of just everything brand new. And then, you know, now having, you know, a full spring under you, a full summer under you, you know, you go into camp, you feel a lot more confident. Um, I, I think our whole room has felt more confident. You know, Danny, Heinrich, Jalen, Bodie, all the guys that, you know, have been preparing and, and getting ready for this. So, um, yeah, we've been preparing a lot better. And, you know, it just it makes it easier for us. So a little bit more on uh, the progress with Raiola from the spring. And cut five, he was asked how his game has grown. I think I've grown a lot in protections, you know, with my uncle. I mean, he works with all the quarterbacks, but, you know, just getting a little extra with him in on on protections. Um, I also think, you know, Coach Thomas has made a big, you know, turnovers. Um, We're we're trying to eliminate all the turnovers and, and make every routine play that we can have. You know, make a routine. And if we can do that, you know, put ourselves in a position to, to win every football game this year, um, you know, that's, that's, a lot, that's what people came here to, to do at Nebraska. How about it? Just do the simple at quarterback. Pitch, catch, six yards, second and four. Pitch, catch, handoff, third and one. It's the old coachism. Take what the defense is giving you. Sure. Or you can go Callahan and say, well, take what we want. <laughs> it was a little better with Mo and, and Zach uh, taking what you want and Brandon Jackson. Well, it's, it's, you do have to have a quarterback that can take what the defense is giving yeah. you. Though, to get back to that coach. Is it because last year, what was the defense giving Nebraska? Deep balls. Mm-hmm. And at times... Nebraska, especially when Jalen Lloyd and Malachi Coleman kind of got their feet wet by the end of the year, you were able to get some knockout punches with some deep balls because the defense was loading up that box. The the question becomes, with a quarterback like Dylan Raiola behind center, I think it's a a safe assumption to think that he's going to be the guy who's taking that first snap against UTEP. Uh, How comfortable is he taking what the defense can give you? Because that's, to me, step one of being a quarterback. The wow throws are what's going to get you drafted, but taking what the defense is giving you is what's going to take – you from five and seven to say seven and five, eight and four. Justin asked the question: Does Raiola match or surpass last season's passing touchdown number in the four, the first four weeks, or maybe even three? Ten touchdowns through three weeks. Ten touchdowns through four weeks. I think you'd take it. I don't know that you set a number. Again, we get back to what's the defense giving you. Now, with a freshman quarterback, defenses are still going to go make him or whoever it is. Raiola, prove it and and throw the football. But ideally, you want to be able to run the football in, in the, into the red zone, not be scared to throw the football. I mean, look at all those red zone missteps you had a year ago. I mean, you're knocking on the door for half of those losses in late game situations where you have game ending interceptions. Iowa, Wisconsin, Sparty. Where else am I going? You had three straight, didn't you, in November? Yeah, because yeah, it was Iowa, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Michigan State. Michigan State, where you got picked at the end, yeah. which well, was tough. But I think a question with that, uh, and I kind of like that question, mm-hmm. is when when does Dylan reach that 10? Because I think it's a matter of when, not if, this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one of the questions that, that 
that will be big in that discussion is how explosive is this passing attack as Matt Rule wants it to be. He wants it to be explosive because I think Matt Rule's vision is like once you get down inside the 15, especially inside the 10, he wants to ground and pound it into the end zone. That's kind of his philosophy. Mm -hmm. And maybe you have a quarterback that you have a better chance to get in the end zone to throw in the football. I don't know. But I think the question as I look at it now is how explosive is this passing attack? How many times are you converting on a 50-yard touchdown, a 60-yard touchdown? Because if you're down inside the 10, I think Matt Rule – who he is, along with Marcus Satterfield, they want to ground that thing into the end zone. Can we sneak in risk-reward here? Let's try to uh, letting it rip, cut four. I mean, that's that's our you know, focus from January, honestly. Um, you can't win games if you turn the ball over. And I think, you know, a lot of people have been through that and, and seen it. So, um, you know, the new guys just, just know that we're not going to turn the ball over and, you know, we're going to put points up on the board. Now, on the flip side of the coin, you, you've got a strong arm. You know you know what you can do with it. So how do you walk that line between making a throw that maybe not many people can make, but you can, but also not putting the ball at risk? Like, how do you mm-hmm. figure out when you're going to try to make a play and when you're going to just check it down? Um, I, I think that's something that, that's like a, a gut feeling, honestly, um, or a situational feeling. It just depends what, you know, you got to have confidence to throw, throw those throws. But you also have to know the situation and what you're trying to accomplish in, in that play, um, in the situation of the game. So it's being aggressive and, and cutting it loose, but it's also being smart and you know knowing, understanding the situation of the game. That high wire act, throw it away, thread the needle. And now. And now, back to Hail Varsity Radio. Thanks for hanging out on a Friday. It's Hale Varsity. We're powered by Cornhead Logger, Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal, Hale Varsity YouTube. Can stream the show on YouTube and watch that way. Hale Varsity Radio, Twitter at HVarsity Radio. We welcome in Ben Butenbach, a former Husker linebacker, pride of Hastings, and a proud papa of Max Butenbach with Husker Baseball. Little little Bo Jackson segment, some football and uh, football baseball. Ben, good to spend time, man. How you been? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Let's start off with uh, a chance to tee it up with Coach Bolton Company and uh, the good folks at 1890 for some NIL August 23rd. Brother, I've not ever had a chance to golf with you. Are you pretty vicious in a good way off the tee box? You know, I try. I try to get after it. You know, part part three is bring out the one wood, you know, let her rip. So I... uh, (laughs) Good thing I know a lot of chiropractors, so I can get my back fixed if I if I throw my back. I, I know. So I'm, not too, I'm not too worried. I, I play it pretty loose. Well, butin back chiropractic, I can attest that uh, you crack me and I'm good. I'm I'm a happy man. <laughs> but uh, this is this is outstanding, uh, Ben. With uh, what's going on, and tell us a little bit how this kind of came to be, and and uh, what uh, folks can expect August 23rd out at Woodland Hills. We love that track. Yep, Woodland Hills, August 23rd. Um, you know, I had, I just had someone come to me and say, we're having a hard time fundraising, uh, getting money for baseball. And since my son's on the team, I was like, well, let me, let me rack my brain. I'll think about it. And, um, you know, it, it's, I think it's hard for people just to give money. you like, Hey, I'm give me a thousand bucks to give these kids. And, and I don't have, I don't, I wouldn't want to do that. So I was like, how about a golf tournament? How about we put on something where they can get something back, um, and they have a good time, get food paid for, get drinks paid for, play some rounds of golf with your buddies, and then it's going to a good cause to these kids that, uh, you know, at this point in time, they're only getting half the core scholarship. So mm-hmm. put a little money in their pockets for them. Love it. Do you worry about getting out there with baseball folks in terms of how hard they can swing? I mean, swinging is a big part of baseball. It's a completely different swing. Are you at all worried about getting out there and getting your ass kicked by these people that swing a bat for a living? <laughs> Well, um, first, first time I've ever you know, heard, heard our, our guest <laughs> ask if they're worried about getting beat up. <laughs> I'm not too worried about baseball no. players. There's there, there a lot of a lot of talk, and they don't. Not too many of them have thick necks. You know, when uh, linebackers, we got thick necks. We can t- we can take what we got. But no, <laughs> hitting wise, you know, it's like it's a, what a hundred yards in. It's all about putting, and they can smash the ball, but they got to be able to have a finesse game and, and put the ball in from 20 feet. So I don't know. We'll see. I think it's going to be a good time. Uh, ben Buten back with us, Hale Varsity Radio, 1890 Husker Baseball, uh, teeing it up here with Coach Bolton Company, August 23rd, 2 o'clock at Woodland Hills. Yep. Get signed yep. up. 
for for that. And I want to spend a minute here on on Max and just the summer he's had. Man, what what a what a great summer Max has had playing ball. Yeah, he's uh, he's having a good time back on the field, getting after it, doing something he loves, um, having some some success. So we have no complaints about that. It's just. Uh, they play like every day, so he's getting he's getting the feel of what it's like. If if you know, if God forbid we ever get into you know minors or majors, it's like it's a, it's a job. So he's knowing that right now it's a job. So it's a grind for him, but he's loving it. So we're happy for him. Is there a? I know there's a QR code. I've got the flyer, and, and we'll yeah. tweet that flyer yeah. out. Is there a website as well? Folks can check out. Yeah, it's go, it's through Golf Status. So if you go through Golf Status, and then. There'll be events, and if you just put Husker Baseball, it'll, it'll come right up. So that's kind of where it's, yeah, golf status. They, they're in partnership with 1890, so they've done a good job for us. So it's been good. That's awesome. Now, you walked on in a big part of Husker football, 95 yeah. through 99. How are you feeling about your big red this season on the gridiron? Uh, I'm liking it. Finally, we've got some maturity on the line. You know, it's like I always say when when I was 18, when I first came in, I thought I was, I was a big shot. But the 22-year-old me would have dominated the 18-year-old me. So it's nice to see these guys, you know, maturity on the line of scrimmage, um, just bigger, bigger, stronger, more mature. That always helps. And, uh, you know, having a quarterback, as we know, it's kind of the engine of the team. And it looks like we got a good one. So or a good, couple of good ones. So I'm, I'm excited for them. How juiced up are you for that Colorado game coming up here soon? It, it's right around the corner. Obviously, UTEP's the first on the schedule, but but Colorado is the big shining prize of non-conference. How juiced up are you for that one? How am I feeling? Is that what you asked? I'm sorry. Just how excited? How, how, how juiced up oh, are I'm you? Super, well, yeah, I'm super excited. So, originally, I am from Colorado. So, I'm from Julesburg, Colorado, before I went to Hastings, and um, I was always a Buff fan. So, Eric Bieniemy and and all them guys back in the day. I was I was the Buff fan in the, the sea of red, and then I go to Nebraska. And now I hate I hate the, I hate the Buffs. So let's get after those guys and, and uh, put them in their place. You know, how'd that work in that era? <laughs> it, it was not good. Well, it was good when Colorado was winning and when I was there, but then uh, the script was flipped and Huskers. You know, we had a run there and was dominant. So. I guess I guess I, I'm one of those guys that just goes for the best team. <laughs> <laughs> hey, keep, keep the options open. Ben Buten back yeah. with us here. No Buten back chiropractic at Tail Varsity Radio. And uh, 1890, tee up with Husker Baseball, August 23rd. Uh, tee off at 2, and uh, that's at yeah. Woodland Hills. Make sure you do yeah. that. We're talking uh, Big Red football for 2024. As a linebacker and as a uh, defensive guy, what do you expect from the defense this year? Well, I, I expect them to get after it. I really do. We got we got some pretty pretty big dudes on the front end that can that can hold or even um, push the line of scrimmage. So you're playing on their side of the line of scrimmage, which I love. Um, we got some fast dudes out there that can uh, get after the ball, and everybody's just kind of a year older, uh, more mature, um, know what the coach wants and needs and going to be asking for um leadership i think is is on the up so I, i'm excited for him i see him just getting after it and especially if they run that three three stack or three four you can bring guys from all different directions um you, you play some quarterbacks that you know we, they don't get a whole lot of that they just get the power eye and the power game and you can come at them on different angles that's that's going to be huge for us ben i wanted to get your thoughts uh, as you go back to that that run you guys had, I I was just kind of getting into the, the the broadcast career side of things in college in in ninety nine, okay. and and that that twelve and, and one team you were on, you guys sent McBride out uh, the right way in the Fiesta Bowl. What yep. would have happened? Let me ask you the hypothetical. What would have happened against Florida State in ninety nine? What would have happened against Mike Vick and Virginia Tech? You know, it, it would have been hard. Mike Vick, he's, he's a special player, um, but he is only one player. So their defense would have had to stop our offense, and it might have been one of those things where 
we get a couple stops, we make them, you know, a couple field goals, we keep scoring and they get behind and then they have to press and, you know, the game over. But, um, you know, coach McBride, he, uh, he's a very, very smart person. He, you know, he, uh, he would know how to figure out how to take, uh, Michael Dick out of it. I believe, I believe so. I think of that, that O line. I mean, you had Hochstein, you had, uh, you had, uh, Dom Riola, you yep. had Crouch yep. as a sophomore. I mean, you guys are pretty loaded. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 You had Tony, yeah. Second round guy. Forgot. Uh, how did yeah. I forget that guy? But yeah, you had Tony on that line as well. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You, he was a specimen. He was a dominant force. I, I, I still talk about it all the time. Like, Generally, you know, I was like 240. I'm running into that lineman. We'd kind of both give, even though I'd probably bounce off a little bit more. Telling you, you ran into him, and he he was like run through a brick, like run into a brick wall. He did not move whatsoever. So he was a guy you wanted to kind of skirt around instead of trying to maybe take on head first. <laughs> One thing, one thing about that Husker offense, it did a great job allowing the defense to play with the lead. You kind of talked about that, where if you did play Virginia Tech, maybe they're getting a little desperate playing from behind. What type of advantage, as we talk about Nebraska's growth offensively this year, does it give a defense to be playing with the lead? Because they didn't play with the lead for very much of last season. Ben, we got you, bud. Did his phone tap out? It may have. Hey. Well. That was a great question, too. That was wonderful. Ben Buten back with us. Ben, we still got you? Hello? That hurts. All right. Well, anywho, we'll uh, say thanks to Ben Buten back with this uh, 1890 Tee Up for Husker Baseball. That is happening August 23rd. And, of course, uh, Ben's son, Max, uh, part of the Husker Baseball team. Great family. Love that family, uh, Max. And, of course, Cash. Cash going to be a senior at Southeast. Uh, tremendous uh, running back and uh, rover for the Knights his senior season. So uh, log on and uh, get this checked out. We'll also tweet it out, uh, the QR code, so you can get signed up, uh, lock it in uh, a week, a little more than a week in front of that first ball game with Nebraska and UTEP, but August 23rd, Woodland Hills. Tee off uh, at 2 o'clock with Coach Bolt, Husker Baseball Fundraiser with 1890, and uh, your chance to uh, give back and, and kick in some support uh, NIL for Husker baseball. So football, baseball segment there. I think Ben's maybe trying to holler back at us. Uh, we'll see if uh, that is him reconnecting in hour two. Bill Dolman going to be with us. Claus Byrne, he's imaginary. He wears red. And uh, Nash coming up, the polar bear with us here in about five minutes. Ben, we, we lost you for a yeah, second. Sorry. No, you're good. You're yeah. good. But we were just talking about Tim McBride. We've got about a minute left. I need okay. to hear I need to hear about the infamous Mohawk you used to rock. Oh. Well, yeah. You know, you're an undersized linebacker. Yeah, I'd, I'd shave, shave my eyebrows, and I'd put myself into a Mohawk, and you just got to get a little crazy. So... That was back in my younger days, but uh, yeah, we, you, you got to look the part if you want to be crazy. You got to look the part a little bit too, right? <laughs> did, you, did you have an alter ego with the Mohawk, like like the Boz? Oh yeah, I had the Madness shirt. So <laughs> the Macho Man Randy Savage, I I, uh, I let her rip. I did, you know. I love I love wrestling back then. I actually I was uh, I had a wrestling. I, I wrestled a little bit. I was a Butte Van Booski and I had the Booski Breaker. So if you want to. Know a little about that. We can talk about that someday too. I, I would, I would, I want to see on camera the Bambuski <laughs> move on on Elijah. Hey, 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 <laughs> yeah, hey, hey! Let's not volunteer me here. Uh, ben Buten back with us. Buten back chiropractic. Uh, tee up with Husker baseball. Eighteen ninety, yeah. and uh, that is August twenty third, two o'clock, Woodland Hills. Ben, we'll see you soon, bud. Uh, we'll tip one back. Perfect. Appreciate you much, and thanks for giving us a few minutes, bud. Can I say one last thing about Please? that, that yes. golf tournament? Yes, sir. So, so we we already have we have a, di- a lunch sponsor. So, um, um, Slim Chicken is going to be doing that, and then we have a drink sponsor. So you get three drink tickets, and we're going to ha- we have a dinner sponsor, uh, Samsung Construction. So, oh, good. you get in it, you get in it. You're going to get two meals and 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 a couple drinks in you. So, come on out, let's get it done. We have 27. Uh, Team signed up right now of 36, so we got nine left, so let's get after it. Get it handled. Ben, you take care, man. Thank you much. I, I appreciate you guys. Hail Varsity Radio is live. Now, back to Schmitty. Schmitty's a great guy, but he don't have a brain. And Elijah. You want me to speak? When I point you, yeah. On Hail Varsity Radio. 
Nash Hutmaker with us here, Hale Varsity Radio, as we get ready for fall camp. Nash, how was the summer, man? What'd you do? Uh, no, the summer was awesome. Coach Campbell obviously did a phenomenal job um, with our training this summer and um, was able to get out and you know see a few concerts and stuff, have a little fun. But um, the, myself and the team, we, I mean, we were locked in all summer on our training and getting ready for fall camp. So give me the, the balance between concerts and, and training. Who'd you see? What shows? Uh, I saw Parker McCollum. I saw Riley Green. And I saw Jelly Roll. So, uh, I mean, those guys are some really great artists obviously um those the concerts were a lot of fun so just sneak out on a friday or saturday night go see a concert this summer it was, it was good my kid is going down to kansas city to see morgan oh yeah. so any any advice i will be here working so advice from a, an elder statesman about uh, about concert going um yeah honestly I, i've got nothing just like enjoy it just have fun with it like going to concerts i love going to concerts i think they're so fun and um yeah just have fun with it are you get in the building guy or front row guy uh i'm a get in the building guy i'm not i'm not paying top dollar to be right in front of the stage for sure nash you mentioned the trading and let's talk about the the chemistry with that front uh and i guess the otis you've taken on yourself with your your mates the the older classmen to help kind of bring along a really talented young room um, yeah, no, this, this summer has only brought us closer together, you know, with the training, hanging out, doing things this summer. Um, me, Ty, Jamari, and Judy, obviously, are the older guys in the room. And we, uh, we are taking leadership of that room and continuing to um, help the younger guys in the room grow and just keep getting better in preparation for the season, for camp in this season. Lots been talked about with uh, how much fun and how effective you were when it came to wrestling, mm-hmm. that body transformation. As you apply it forward here, let's talk a little bit about how you feel and from, I guess, the the effect... Your, your body type now can have in this season yeah that's um i feel i feel great this summer this is probably uh the best i felt um in all my years of college um obviously dropped a little bit of weight um feeling very explosive feeling very quick light on my feet um especially compared to last year and it's uh i think it's just definitely going to help me to be more of a dynamic player be able to uh do some different things with me not just playing that strictly nose position um be able to move me out play three technique do all those things so i'm uh, really excited for um, to get into it and just start keep getting better. So what do you want to be able to do in that three-tech spot, and how's that job differ from, from the nose? Um, it's Obviously, it's a lot of the same stuff. Just um, develop myself as a three-technique is what I need to do, I feel like, to take that next step in my game, and it's uh, it's definitely different than nose. You know, you've got a little more room to work with. Um, there at the nose, everything happens basically on your first step, and out there, it's, you know, your second or third step where stuff's happening, so I'm uh, just just excited to keep um, develop myself and getting better at that. Nash with us here on Hale Varsity. Coach has talked a lot about getting home with four. It's not that you won't or don't blitz, you will, with this defense and Coach White. But where do you think this this line is at from an ability standpoint to to maybe not have to bring that extra rusher? Yeah, no, I think uh, I think we're going to be able to get there with four consistently this year. That's uh, that's been a big goal of ours. Um, we've been working, um, just having everyone understand pass rush lanes, you know, all that stuff that comes with it. And um, we're super super excited to just keep developing, keep getting better. Nash, let's uh, talk about the offense as you've been working out uh, what have you seen from the offensive side of the ball this summer um yeah no those guys are i mean same as same as us on the defense side of the ball those guys are uh continue to get closer continue to develop and get better um those guys um are are working really hard they're gonna they're gonna come out and um, be a lot better than they were last year and i'm just super excited to see it okay defense and takeaways coach rule just talked about it it's an emphasis but all right you can talk about about taking the football away how do you actually implement it um yeah no that's like you said you can talk about only talk about it so much but we uh we do every pretty much every day uh practice in the spring we open up practice with a turnover circuit we're punching at the ball we're getting the ball out um just working technique stuff and then um you just work on that stuff during practice like um we always talk about balls to you you're punching at the ball if the ball's away you're tagging off on the hip um on the 
on the outside or just thudding up, obviously. And so it's just things that we harp on um, and, and get on guys where if they're not doing it how we want to, want it to be done, they're not punching at the ball. Um, you get on those guys and it continues to just build, build to pretty soon everyone's doing it and um, we're just getting better. Last question here for Nash and fishing. Did you get much fishing done this summer? Um, yeah, went fishing a few times. Got to go back home um, a couple times, go up on Lake Sharp and um, do some walleye fishing, some smallmouth fishing. So, yeah, I got I got up and got a good amount of fishing in this summer. How do you do your walleye? Uh, we, I mean, we do it in all kinds of different ways. We'll fry it, we'll bake it, we'll do all this. But definitely my best, or my favorite way is just, I mean, just fried walleye, um, flayed out and just fry it that's definitely my favorite way fried walleye is incredible how do you is it a uh, kind of a panko crust uh, put your uh, chef hat on or is it beer batter yeah we do my favorite's probably the beer batter crust but um yeah we my dad's like a wizard in the kitchen he does all the, he has, sometimes he gets fancy and sometimes it's just good old beer batter on it so nash take care thanks for a few minutes yeah thanks for having me five good minutes with the polar bear that was good stuff and Walleye sounds incredible tonight. I'm just not a a good walleye. Like I, I can't catch fish. I catch cold typically. Uh-huh. Grandpa'd always do the old beer batter. Uh, but it was crappie, not not walleye. Got to call up uh, old Timmy because he's he. I think he he goes up to South Dakota and he catches all the walleye. Uh, our, our our mutual friend Timmy. Yeah. Yeah. How, well, how do you cook? Do you, is is fried your favorite way to do it as well? The beer batter is the way to go. And yeah. Grandpa wasn't a big beer drinker. Grandpa Hunt out in McCook, but he'd 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 get a tall boy a bush light. Yeah. And he'd do the beer batter that way, and then he'd finish the rest of the tall boy, and that was his that was his beer or two for the summer, depending because every August he'd do a, a fish fry out in western Nebraska for half of western Nebraska, it felt like. Mm-hmm. And uh, he'd even do some hush puppies. But, yeah, beer batter's the way to go. Absolutely. My favorite way to do fish is to you, well, you go to the store, you go back to the, the meat counter and get yourself a ribeye, and then take that home, pan sear that, and throw the fish away. That's, that's, <laughs> that's my way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'll take the ribeye <laughs> and keep the fish well played elijah thank you thank you i had you going that one way no, like, maybe here, there's gonna listen, be some surf and turf thing going on here now no i mean the Not just the turf it's, it's better with the the fishermen actually who know how to catch beer batter pan sear just do it right you know and i i can fish if it's freshly caught, whether right. you're by the ocean or maybe you catch something out of Holmes Lake, whatever you're, you're doing here, um, that's fine. <laughs> maybe not Holmes Lake. I don't know. Uh, the freshly caught. I, I've seen a fish with seven eyes come out of that <laughs> lake, brother. I kid you not. <laughs> no, you're definitely kidding. Seven? Three. Okay, that's, that's believable at least. <laughs> uh, I didn't catch it. Grandpa did. Let's just say he played the catch and release card on that one. You know, freshly caught fish, great perfectly fine with non-freshly cut which you don't get a lot of here in nebraska it's, i raise my eyebrows out a little bit well nash let's let's get the old uh walleye food truck going we'll wind out hour one hail varsity continues and now and now back to hail varsity radio one final time this hour podcast the show spotify itunes google play hail varsity radio like and subscribe appreciate you doing so Give us that feedback and rating, please. We uh, appreciate the good, bad, and ugly. Hail Varsity YouTube can watch the show daily. That way, weekend edition tomorrow morning, myself, Mark Cranach, Elijah, 745 sharp. 745. Uh, YouTube is where you can check that out. Hail Varsity, like and subscribe there. Reminder to buckle up. Use your seatbelt. It saves lives. It prevents injuries only if properly worn. Make it click. A message from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. So, Mama got home from Morgan Wallen with Aunt Ashley Jr. I, I, I don't know if he's still detained or what, but he, they, he had a good time as well. So, the, the bunny was taking a nap. And it's like, so why are you so tired? I know it was a thousand degrees. Was the show awesome? She said, yeah, little Evie, my niece went uh, as well. 
And I, I said, okay, did you guys at least after the show go Waffle House it? She's like, no. What? Exactly. Don't you have to Waffle House it after a concert? You're, you're on the road? If you're in the vicinity of a Waffle House, I for think any there, reason, you I Waffle think House I it. think the, you're not too far from any Waffle House in near Arrowhead. No, there's tons of Waffle right. Houses around. You, if you're in the vicinity of a Waffle House, you got to at least stop for a Waffle. I think so. We may have more... <laughs> we may have more... Uh, Recipes for walleye. Adam checks in. Let's read Adam's suggestion here on the stream. Hail Varsity YouTube channel. Instead of panko, try club crackers with Parmesan cheese mixed in. Pan fry it in a little bit of butter until brown on both sides. It's delicious. I got to find somebody who's got walleye. And I know one guy that, that does, but I, I haven't been invited to the fish fry yet. Who's you got, with us? You got a walleye guy? I do. Wow. Yeah. How about that? You, you do too. <laughs> no, I do not. I do not have a walleye Who's guy. with us? Jim. Jim, what do you know, bud? Hey, walleye? You know, obviously you get up around South Dakota, you fish for walleye on Hawaii. But the best recipe in the world is just put some flour in a, in a pan, and not a, not a skillet, but mm-hmm. just a bowl. Mm-hmm. Start adding beer with a little bit of, uh, oh, uh, seasoning, whatever you want. Nothing heavy. But you want a runny pancake batter type thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then put put a little Crisco in the skillet. And uh, you don't want it burning, burning, but you want it pretty warm. Crispin. And you lay them walleye fillets in there, and you don't have to get crazy with anything. Just let them brown and flip them over in about three minutes. You'll have the best eating you've ever had in your life. Jimbo, I, I, we need to, to do this uh, at a tailgate, uh, and you had me at just add beer. <laughs> I yeah, love that. Well, this is, this is the easiest recipe in the world. I guarantee you 90% of the people that cook walleye that to cook it good are, don't get crazy with it. Just a little flour and add beer and, and a little all spy, or, uh, seasonal, mm-hmm. a little bit, and then just... Uh, let it get a little runny and dip your fish in there and just lay them in kind of pretty hot grease. You don't want it to uh, you want it to sizzle when you put it in. In about three minutes, and flip it, and you'll you'll just love it. I love it, Jim. Thank you for the update. It. Thank you, and we need uh, we need Jim to make a small eye with I, I, cornhead lager. That's the beer we're going to go with. I love whenever we get people calling in with recipes. Like, who needs a cookbook when you have Hail Varsity Radio? Absolutely. Uh, Cornhead Lager, we'll use that for the the walleye experiment. Pride of Fairberry is on the way. It's Bill Dolman, Hail Varsity, powered by Cornhead Lager. He's the Pride of Fairberry, an average Joe. Bill Dolman, the professor. I had a 6 ACT in 1967. One time I got an A and my grandma beat me for cheating. Now with Hail Varsity Radio. Back with you, Tower 2. It's Hale Bar City, powered by Cornhead Lager, Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal, the Pride of Fairberry, Bill Dolman with us, the professor. Find him on Twitter at Bill Dolman. More of your suggestions for how to do walleye the right way uh, coming into the stream. Bill, we're going to play a clip for you. This clip is uh, Teddy Prohaska. Uh, as Heinrich Harburg said, stereotyping him as a carny guy. Let's let's hear it. And this is Harburg from earlier today. Teddy Teddy likes to stereotype me um, <laughs> into like a farmer, um, <laughs> even though I don't I, I don't know where he gets that from. I guess he played Carney High a lot, and I. I, don't know, I get. I I didn't hang around the Carney High guys a whole lot, so I don't know exactly what they were like. But I think he kind of groups me into that, and I mean, um, I don't I don't know. You have a farming background. Well, I I do, um, but I didn't grow up like in a combine. Um, <laughs> so um, I mean, my dad owns a ag equipment manufacturing company. Um, my the Harburgs have been farming since 1860 in Nebraska. Um, my mom's side's a ranch family, so I mean there is some of that. But I mean I didn't grow up on a farm. I grew up on a small acreage outside of Kearney, so I don't know. Okay, so the the, the air quote Cardi guy, Bill Dolman, described it, our audience a Fairberry guy. What's the stereotype of a Fairberry guy? 
Well, that our um, uh, our refrigerators and freezers are stocked with Fairbury hot dogs, okay, bacon bits, and um, the the Monopoly guy because everybody wants to know what a Jeff is. So, but the the main thing is is that that we all grew up on hot dogs, which we did, and that the town smells like bacon, which it does. Uh, from time to time. In fact, uh, I was I was back home for my uh, my class reunion last weekend, and went on a tour of the Bonham Theater, which was a phenomenal renovation done. Named after to, John. Uh, what's that? Was it named yeah, after John? Yeah, all right, John Bonham Theater. Exactly. That was a little hideaway for uh, Led Zeppelin. Uh, but we walked out of the theater, which again is a gem. They they renovated it. It's it's a wonderful thing. Uh, that they did for the community. You can go see a movie there for five bucks, by the way. Uh, but anyway, we walk outside and the whole town smells like bacon. I mean, it was like heaven, right? Uh, so that was that was pretty cool. So yeah, the, but if if we're going to be stereotyped, it's that uh, we all grew up on Fairbury brand hot dogs. I'd, that'd be all right. Town that smells like bacon. Theater that was. Uh inspired by john bonham we aren't going to ask you what kind of <laughs> what kind of movies they show after midnight <laughs> yeah yep heaven on earth right there oh, there yep. you go there you, you're looking at me like i'm crazy no, i know i'm trying to think of like what other towns can we stereotype here real quick what other listeners can we make shut the well, radio off <laughs> well t.o no, t.o isn't t.o's not confusing council bluffs with an oil rich arab city <laughs> I don't think anyone ever has done that. No. I love Council Bluffs. Uh, and Omaha, Lincoln. I don't know. Uh, we, Omaha, you know, I mean, if, if you're going to get down to, you know, if it's all going to be based on food, of course, Omaha's steaks, mm-hmm, sure. right? Uh, not just for the, the mail, the, 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 the stuff you order through the mail, but... Mm-hmm. I mean, when I was growing up, the Omaha stockyards were huge, and Exarbon, mm-hmm. uh, you know, had... Uh, had a, a great rich history. Uh, Wilbur, you know, they probably have kolache fights, right? <laughs> and check days. They give you they give you milk jugs of beer at, at, at check days at Wilbur. Yeah, that's a good it's a good time there. It There's is. no question about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So we've heard. So we have heard. Bill, let's get into football. Wait, so your story just reminded me of back during 2020 during COVID. There was a, an establishment by my house. That would that did take out in order to keep mm-hmm. their business afloat, and they sold uh, milk gallons full of beer as their take away, or like their takeout beer. And uh, I thought it was very fun walking over to this establishment and then walking back <laughs> home drinking out of a milk jug of beer. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with that. That just brought back a memory I forgot I even had. Uh, the the old drive through margarita stand. They thought it was for me. It was for the wife. Uh, anywho, so Bill, yeah, we got to hear from Dillard Riola Harburg. Danny F and K, and of course, Mr. Glenn Thomas today. Takeaways uh, with uh, the progress from their own words of of the three quarterbacks, and how this thing's shaping up as we're day three into camp. It can't kick out kickoff can't get here quick enough. Well, a couple of takeaways. First of all, I thought Danny Kalen was Ga- uh, Garrett McGuire. Uh, <laughs> they look like lick and sound like twins danny kalen has a future as a uh, coach no question about that he handles himself extremely well um the the quarterback from uh morningside or wh- wherever he's coming from what's his name northwest uh northwest Gra- what's his Gra- name gramstead jalen yes yeah i was amused that when uh, they asked dylan rayola about jalen and he says, well, the first thing that comes to mind is speed. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Which one are you talking about? <laughs> because because clearly one he associated with speed and the other one, uh, you know, is a really smart guy to uh, have in the quarterback room. Hmm. So I, I'm guessing, uh, I'm guessing uh, the, the new quarterback is not – as fast as the other Jalen. I'm just going to go out on a limb there. Track, but it was just funny. Track, was, track speed, quarterback speed, right? It was just funny. It was funny how he caught himself like, well, Jalen, oh, yeah, speed. Oh, wait a minute, which one? Oh, yeah, uh, great guy in the room. Uh, <laughs> I'm surprised we didn't get a sneaky athlete in there. Uh-huh. Motor, yeah. motor that keeps uh, running. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. The other guy's pacing himself, Sergeant. Um, so that was good. 
look, I I uh, I was impressed that Nebraska had the three guys get out there today. Um, they all have very three. Uh, all three have very different personalities. Um, I thought it was. I thought this was the second time I heard Glenn Thomas, and he seemed much more relaxed. I, I, I don't want to say he was unsure, but you know, when he got hired. I mean, that's pretty much a whirlwind, and I think he was probably just trying to figure out, you know, how to get from A to B, uh, and all that. So I, I thought we got a much better gauge of who he is. Uh, he dropped the Matt Ryan uh, name tag, you know, on the floor, and picked that up pretty quickly. But I, I, I think Nebraska got a, a very that was a good hire. You can just tell he's he's a he's a smart guy and he's been around. Um, and but I, I thought all three quarterbacks handled themselves well within their own personality. Uh, I, I couldn't be more impressed with, with the way Danny Kalen addresses the media. Uh, Dylan Rayola is very measured in in how he talks and uh, uh, clearly has a presence about him. And, you know, I, I think I think when you listen to Heinrich Harburg, I, I think there's every reason that Nebraska fans are you know pulling for the guy. And because he's been put in a tough situation. Uh, last year, he was the hero because he took over, you know, for the failed uh, uh, experiment with the Jeff Sims experiment, which was, you know, failed right out of the gate. And then Harburg was, you know, tasked with being the guy to try and salvage the season. And he got beat up doing it. You know, he kind of went through the whole Adrian Martinez um, uh, physicality and beating. And then he comes back as the returning starter, and all, and you got two freshmen that are getting all the hype, including one of the most hyped up players in Nebraska football history, and one of the most hyped up freshmen in the country this season. But he handles himself well, and you know, I, I, I think that he's to be commended for, for that. And if he's not playing quarterback, I, th- I do think Nebraska's got to find a way to put him on the field in a way that he can have an impact on the game. And I think he, his physicality, he's got a future in football, but it's not going to be a quarterback. It's Bill Dolman with us here on Hale Varsity Radio, the pride of Fairbury. And Bill, as we dive into fall camp, one thing is a guarantee, and that's that among Husker Nation, the Kool-Aid will be flowing in some way, shape, or form during fall camp. It's a given, especially whenever you talk about the quarterbacks. Remember last year, a lot of conversation about the athleticism that Jeff Sims brought and not much to be said about the turnovers. That's just kind of how fall camp goes. I, I think you can probably expect more of the same this year with the quarterbacks. You'll hear a lot of the good, maybe not much of the bad. And before we reach that point where the Kool-Aid is flowing, especially after a, a practice tomorrow, it's going to be open to the public where I'm sure there's going to be videos and commentary coming out about the quarterbacks. Can you lay out your expectations once again, generally speaking for the quarterback room and for Riola in 2024, the expectations as they stand right now before the Kool-Aid inevitably changes some of the expectations before that UTEP game? I think the expectation for all three of them or, or whoever it is uh, has to be you 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 will be expected to hold on to the football and not turn the ball over. Um, I think we've kind of read the mandates over the last two, two weeks, especially since. Uh... Yeah, that's my phone. Um, Thanks for the conversation. So... Godfather. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um uh, I, that, the, the mandate is you got to hold on to the ball, and if you don't hold on to the ball, you're not going to play. And you know, I think that's kind of a tenuous position to have as the head coach when uh, that's supposed to be for everybody, right? you got to hold on to the ball. Well, we saw with um, uh, who was the running back last year, that hard, uh, Grant, you know, fumbles at once, you don't see him again. What happens if Dylan Rayola fumbles the ball and has Jeff Sims problems in week one? Is there a week two? Is he how long is it? Is he in the doghouse for? Uh, the same thing that goes for Heinrich Harburg and and uh, Danny Kalen, but most notably for Dylan Riola. If if Nebraska has problems maintaining possession, if he throws it away, if he makes some bad decisions, uh, if he can't hold on to it when he's running with it, which he won't do very much anyway, does he get pulled? And how long does you know? Do they pull him? Is it is it the next guy up? And it's the next guy's job to lose tiger shark diver brings up an excellent point that dylan does not have a dog house <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we found out today that the dog's uh what living uh with, with him and his him. sister and probably living his best life in lincoln you uh-huh. know what i'm saying 
Yeah, I believe that. he. Uh, I think he's pretty cognizant of taking care of the football and uh, will will live to fight another down. But, you know, that, that uh, risk-reward factor. You want a guy to, to show off his skills, Bill and Elijah, but you don't want to... Um, to, to risk the biscuit, as uh, old Bruce Arians used to say, in that red zone. It's so imperative with his defense returning to just go get points. Don't don't shoot yourself in the foot, uh, which is, you know, there's been a, a, an automatic weapon used on Nebraska's foot the last 10 years with the uh, the turnover issues and uh, points off turnovers. And can so. I say, I, I think the only way that Dylan would be dragged to the bench – is if you're worried about him potentially damaging his future career by a lack of confidence, like getting thrown to the wolves, if he's not who you think he is coming into it and you're saying, okay, this might permanently damage who he is as a quarterback. You've seen it before in the NFL where a bad rookie season can ruin a career because the confidence goes away. That's, I think, the only point you'd probably see Dylan sit this year is if you worry about the confidence going away. Based on everything I know about Dylan Ryle and how this coaching staff handles him, I, I don't think so. Maybe that's just me. I don't. I don't think we see that. Same I don't. Way. I don't worry about confidence with him, yeah, Bill. And I. I don't worry about. I think he's. I think he's advanced. He's. He, that's why he's in that five star realm. It's not just the physical, but it's the the mental. And I. It's, well, I don't think he's going to be a, a fully refined product. You're sorry not to cut you off, Bill, but I don't think he's going to be a fully right. refined product. We're going to expect to see freshman mistakes. I don't think you drag him out there unless, or you drag him out of the game unless you're worried about the psyche. I think you'd do more damage by pulling him to his psyche than you do letting him ride through some of those freshman difficulties. I, I just, I just think that that's the one area where Matt Rule has to be a little careful with, you know, making sure that the rules are there for everybody. And if Nebraska has, if he has some problems holding on to the ball, then the opener, like Jeff Sims did, you know, what's the protocol going to be going forward? I don't think I look. I don't think that's going to be the case because first of all, they're not going to allow him to run and try to make plays with his feet like Jeff Sims thought they thought he could do. He was sort of allowed to do, and he may have done on his own. He couldn't hold on to the ball. Dylan Rayo is not going to be put in a situation where he's going to be running around and could get tackled and have it jarred loose. Um, Heinrich Harburg is probably going to be the quarterback that's going to have the green light to run when he is in there, however often he is in there, because we know he can be a physical quarterback. Dylan has some confidence in where he can place the ball when it comes to throwing it. And it might be an unusual confidence, more so than we've ever seen with a Nebraska quarterback, where I think I can fit that into that tight window, and maybe he thinks he can, but on the other end, the play can't be made, right? And maybe that results in an interception. I'm just saying – Look, for, for all of those guys, the expectation for Nebraska's quarterbacks is you have to maintain possession of the football. Nebraska's quarterbacks don't have to win games this year. I'm not talking that they have to be game managers, but they have to be able to keep Nebraska's offense in position to win games. It's Leave it to the defense to win them, right? Mm-hmm. Leave it to some of those playmakers on the outside. But the quarterbacks at this stage of their careers – don't have to go out and win games and be who they rely on. Like Adrian Martinez. Mm -hmm. They don't have to do that. Taylor Martinez. Go, go put the Superman cape on bill. Need five minutes on the other side. Can we get it? Can do. All right. Bill Dolman, some overtime. And that was brought up by Arlo in the stream. Yeah. Don't want to to screw up a a five star if you're Nebraska, because you want more five star Arm talents to follow suit for sure, or more blue chip arm talents to, to follow suit. And uh, you look at Adrian, we had Searles on earlier this week talking about the start of uh, of uh, Adrian's career in Lincoln and how it ended in much different situation. More with Bill Dolman, a tale varsity powered by Cornhead Lager. And now, and now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. A few minutes of overtime here with the pride of Fairbury. It's Bill Dolman, at Bill Dolman, the professor, Elijah Herbal, Chris Schmidt, Klonsburn, coming up here in about 15 minutes or so. Uh, We've got an abbreviated version with Claus because he's off to, what did he tell us, the Red Sox? 
most likely story. <laughs> I don't know what Red Sox are code for. Another run across the border. Do you want me to fill in on his time and talk Penn State, or what do you, what no, do you guys want no, to do? No, we, we do not. <laughs> I'm, I'm fearful he's going to get into uh, to Olympic boxing in about 15 minutes. That's been a complicated situation. <laughs> more and more information comes out. Very complicated. Yeah. And if there's any man for nuanced conversation, it is Claus. Yeah, because <laughs> he, he doesn't care. <laughs> Well, Andy Staples, good story, and on three about uh, pivot point ball games this college football season. And, you know, there's a game or two, and you look back at uh, the world of college football, it's a game that maybe wasn't on the radar or was an assumption, or, yeah, it's a tough game, but it's not the tough game, not the biggest game on the schedule, but it will either keep your momentum or kill your momentum and there's plenty of them around uh, the different conferences this season you know what's florida and coach billy uh, got in store to to keep his gig a and m is circled as that game nc state clemson does nc state finally get over the hump they've been a good program oklahoma at auburn that's a that's a really sticky and dangerous follow-up game i think that's right after they play texas and then we get into to Nebraska, man, and I was trying to circle one pivot game, and I could make a case for a lot of them on the schedule. I could make a case for, for UTEP. How do you get off to the 2024 season with a presumed freshman quarterback? How about the buffs, right, under the lights? That is your payback slash momentum gainer. Rutgers is going to be a, a bull team and a team that could make some noise uh, on the uh, the physicality side of things. Indiana, that game could be a bit scary. But also Purdue, that's the first road game. And then you get into November, do you actually get to split or sweep and not lose out to Iowa, Wisconsin? So like I said, I've just spit out half the schedule. I think I'm going to go with Colorado as my pivot game this season. Elijah, Bill, I'd like your guys' thoughts here. Bill, uh, fire away. And Elijah, I, I hope it's not all the same answer, but maybe it is. Maybe it is Colorado. Oh, I, I'm like you. I think it's uh, every game on the schedule. You know, you Chuck, you're coming off the, as I've said, 61st consecutive offseason national championship, and you lose out of the gate or play don't play well against UTEP. Uh, that's going to be an immediate buzzkill for the rest of the season. Uh, you beat UTEP, and then you yeah, uh, lose to, to Colorado at home. That will be – I'm not going to say that's going to be disastrous – I think it's going to be a little bit like last year. Should Nebraska lose it, there's still a long way to go. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can probably recover into – I mean, you're going to go to a bowl game. But, uh, look, if Nebraska beats Colorado, that is strat- that is a stratospheric launch uh, momentum for the rest of the season and excitement. And the dollars will flow into every NIL coffer that 1890 can come up with. Um, they could sell $100 tickets to practice after that. Um, but then, you you know, Northern Iowa, I, I think the Illinois game, uh, is, is somewhat of a circle the calendar game. Okay. It's a Friday night game at home. You beat them last year. You would be what three and zero going into that game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not saying Illinois is, is going to be better than they were last year, but man, you can't start off 3-0 and and then start off conference play with a loss at home on a Friday night. That, that to me, would be – that would be really detrimental for the rest of the season. Um, you know, Purdue on the road, you know, that's that's kind of a dull place to play. Indiana with a new coach, you, you don't want to lose to, the you know, that guy the first time around. But I look at Illinois as, as a hinge as a hinge game as you get into – then get into October and – um, see where your momentum is at that point. You know, I know that going in when it was announced that UCLA and USC were going to be on the schedule and everybody thought, oh, my gosh, you, you, that's those are a couple losses. I still don't know where people think automatically because they just know that UCLA is in Los Angeles and uh, USC, you know, is, is USC with Lincoln Riley. I, I don't think those are – I think Nebraska has every bit of a chance to win those games, especially UCLA at home. Well, um, so it, Illinois is the one I kind of circle as how are you going to go into the middle middle part of the season? I circle UCLA and USC, Bill, 
And it, it kind of depends on which one of those two games is the swing game based on how the season goes for UCLA. But I look at it as that's your kickstart to November. Nice. UCLA and USC, we know how important November is in the Big Ten. That's where a lot of movement happens in the Big Ten standings. Uh, that's where, you, you, I guess, the, the bread is won, if you will, is in that month of November. And you look at the games that followed up with Wisconsin and Iowa, anything but pushovers. Uh, the two games that lead into that are UCLA and, and USC. So I, I'll circle one of those two depending on how it goes. If UCLA has a, a fine year in the Big Ten, I'd probably circle UCLA. If they have a down first year, I circle USC. But it's because of what it follows up to. You have gone on the road to Ohio State. The way it stands right now, I don't see Nebraska winning that game against Ohio State. You hope it's not a beatdown, but I don't think Nebraska wins that. How do you respond to to that loss, as at least as I see it right now, with UCLA and, and USC? How do you respond and how do you set yourself up to get yourself right before that November stretch? That's why I circle those two games, not because of the challenge they present Nebraska, but because of how it leads you into the end of your season, which, as we know in the Big Ten, is paramount. It's interesting, right? Presumably, you get better as the season goes forward. You make that jump week one to week three. You stabilize. You keep growing and getting better. You get better depth. Guys kind of come into their own. They're, air quote, not freshmen anymore this late in the season. I like your point about November in UCLA. Do you go three and one? Do you go two and two? Do you go over? Do you go one and three in the month of November? That's going to determine likely – uh, your postseason berth, but Illinois is a great take as well because you don't want to uh, have that uh, what happened loss that's plagued Nebraska football. There's been a lot of what happened losses, but you've had one in decent seasons that kept you away from ten or nine or ten or eleven. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Colorado because I do think it's that launch point. The, the argument I can make for Colorado is it will set the media narrative nationally regarding Nebraska this season. If you right. win, if it's you a win, confidence the, builder too. Yeah, if you win the game, you're nationally relevant. If you don't win the game, you're not nationally relevant until you win a game that proves otherwise. That's why Here, I, think, I think Colorado could be a big swing game. Here's another thing too. Uh, I would I'm gonna I'm gonna bet we'll go to the Maristar. Um, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say Nebraska is gonna go into November already bowl eligible. Okay. And I think that's a lot different than a year ago when I mean look after they beat Illinois I, I was I was making reservations for every um, every bowl game because all of the uh, uh, chambers of commerce would be dying to have Nebraska in their bowl game right. Um, and it didn't happen, and it was a scramble all the way down to the final kick of the of the regular season, the final second of the regular season. Nebraska's fighting to get into a bowl game, fighting, and every week that pressure of this is going to be the one. You lose heartbreaking a uh, heartbreaking to Maryland. You lose the heartbreaker to Iowa, and you're on the outside looking in uh, in postseason play. This year, I think it will be different because I think Nebraska will have become bowl eligible in eh, September, but bowl eligible in the middle of the season. So the mentality and the approach to the end of October and into those games in November is going to be much different. That pressure is not going to be hanging over that football team. It might be you got to win to get to Indy to play in the Big Ten championship game, right? Uh, get a win on the road at USC or, you know, the Wisconsin. Yeah, the, the back half of the season is is a little more challenging. But I don't think it's going to be – it's going to have the pressure of getting the win to go to a bowl game. And I think that's completely different than what we, uh, what we had last year. Very remember few. last year also, Nebraska, remember Nebraska had was in the conversation that if everything fell the right way and they won the games that they could still be in the big 10 championship game. Right. We were kind of mystified by that. But they were in that conversation. But they were also in the conversation of going to a bowl game. When's that going to happen? And it didn't. This year, that will be taken care of before they get to the end of November. You want to talk about the uh, just the, the, the mood where you had a great October. We, the reason we picked Sparty, what did the check it out? Kind of the, the, the Nebraska-Michigan State history. We were up there for it. Hey, it's the first time in X number of years that they're going to be bowl eligible. Let's let's be there for post game. And Nebraska fans still did their damnedest to drink uh, East Lansing out of beer. I get it, but this was <laughs> this was uh, out of out of sorrow and not joy. 
And then you had another crack at it over time. More beer needed. And then you had Iowa. Not only did you deal with in-laws, but you dealt with another kick. <laughs> you dealt with another... Maryland. Yeah, Reds, Maryland. Don't uh, Mar- Maryland. Yeah, oh, sorry. A uh, little Tua. <laughs> Putting one drive together all game. And, yeah, I think the mentality part, and we've talked about that a lot this week, is just this team's psyche and where they're, where, where they're at with it. They, they've got to follow through on the work they've put in. And that work has been recognized by coaches and teammates and peers and players. Wonderful. It's got to show up on Saturdays when, when the moment presents itself. So all great points, those different pivots. Uh, Illinois, yes. Colorado, yes. UCLA for sure with the bounce back. Assuming things go to plan if you're a big Red fan where you don't misstep and you handle your business and you get quarterback play that's not turnover heavy. You get defense that's uh, making that jump and better than advertised. You get an O-line and a run game that can control the ball game. Billy D, as we say goodbye, what do you got going this weekend? That's a really good question. I probably should have answered the phone earlier. Maybe that was somebody saying, hey, you want to do something this weekend? <laughs> I might actually go out to Colorado and uh, and uh, hang out with uh, with, with Dion and the, no, I'm not going to do that. But uh, talk him out of the powder blues. Well, we could we could do another Bud Crawford watch party at my house potentially. Nice. I can, I can oh. see about that. Okay. I am a, night, a right? dog madhouse at my house right now. I'm dog sitting, but are you? Hey, what's that. up with the, uh, the the new uh, the new seat there? Um, yeah, you need to get me a booster chair. But I, I like that you're, you know, you're you know, you're kind of looking into the camera this time around, but. It was somebody. Not, it looks like somebody needs to get you like some mac and cheese and uh, or whatever. But yeah, no, we, the, we no these these are these are seeds from the the other studio in our home well, studio of KFOR. Straight, no, that's good. Yeah, is that better? Yeah, are you I talking to smoke? Elijah or me? I was oh, talking me. to. A, well, yeah, you've always had that towering look, but uh, <laughs> no, Elijah's Elijah's uh, Elijah looks like he's at you know. Like looking at us. Mm-hmm, I like it. As I opposed contact. to looking up at the uh, security camera. <laughs> uh-huh. Black it out. Bill, be good. Appreciate you, brother. All right, boys. See you later. Go Big Red. And now. And now. Back to Hale Varsity Radio. Why did that a Friday? It's Hale Varsity. We're powered by Cornhead Logger. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal. Get the podcast. Spotify, iTunes, Google Play. Where you can download the audio, the video portion, Hale Varsity YouTube. Let's check in with Claus Byrne. It's another Friday forecast commentary. As uh, Claus, he's imaginary. He wears red. He joins us here on the program. Claus, how's uh, your Friday treating you? Well, it's uh, going pretty well. As I mentioned to you fellas, when you asked if I'd be available today, I'm getting ready to attend the uh, Red Sox game tonight, and you might be surprised that I am a Red Sox fan, and I'll tell you why. It's because I love that dirty water. It's the only thing that's separating us from Council Bluffs. Wow. Claus, I wanted to ask you about Council Bluffs. I I love CB, love heading over to the casino. You uh, may have known somebody that had a shot or two at at the the city during some uh, some online gambling testimony earlier this week. Well, first of all, I'm I'm very sure it's just the casinos that you like going to over there, not the uh, Quonset hut a few miles south. <laughs> you can fall in love, Claus. But I do. <laughs> I'm sure that's the place to find it. $20 at a time. So I did want to, I'm glad I'm getting the opportunity to set the record straight. I feel like it might have been unfair to compare Council Bluffs to Abu Dhabi. I probably should have compared it to something more close to home. So I'd like to set the record straight and say Council Bluffs. Just because it doesn't look like Abu Dhabi doesn't mean that it's not doing well. It looks like Vegas got a meth problem, but they're working on it. So, <laughs> wow. Glasburn is with us here. On I think Hale. we should give him credit for that. Glasburn's with us here on Hale Varsity. 
Claus, the, the big Twitter hubbub this week happened yesterday with Patrick Mahomes and Tariq Hill and others saying, wow, Dylan is Patrick 2.0 moving on into the dorms. What do you think of the social media buzz? Well, first of all, it was a really uncanny resemblance. Uh, the, the hair is just right, the sunglasses, the little uh, patch of fuzz on the chin. He really looked a lot like him. And if that those things combined with a red number 15 jersey help win championships, I'm all for it. Although <clears throat> I think the person who's probably most excited is Thomas Fedoni wondering when he's going to get a date with Taylor Swift, and I have to caution him, <laughs> probably not going to happen. That's pretty good. Claus with us here on Hale. It did remind me. I was going to say it did remind me back in in my day, back in the 90s, we had a a quarterback who wanted to show up looking like an NFL quarterback. But I told Tommy, you're probably not going to look a whole lot like Troy Aikman unless you can grow a blonde mullet. So Mm. did not work out for him. Although Scott Frost kind of resembles Troy Aikman and that both of them have invested heavily in the alcohol industry, though <laughs> Troy's got his own beer. <laughs> well, it's Claus with us here on Hale Varsity City wow. Radio. And Claus, I think you kind of underscore my point here that you're the person we like to go to for nuanced and sensitive topics. You tend to... Uh, Really hit those well and hit them with. I handle them with care, that's for sure. Yeah, and that's why we want to go to Olympic yes. boxing. Uh, Olympic boxing has been in the news. Obviously, you have the uh, the female boxer with the XY chromosomes caused a stir. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Whether she should be eligible. Thoughts that don't get us removed. <laughs> well, I've I've read more into it, and she was born a female, so she ought to be able to compete. But even if she hadn't. Hey, we let Andy Kaufman do all that kind of stuff back in the 80s and thought it was hilarious, so I don't see a problem with it now. Told you. I told you. Nuanced conversation. Yeah, Claus is going to nail it. Claus, and he did. Claus, I appreciate it. As we wind it down, Claus, Skip Bayless riding off into the sunset. No more Skip Bayless on TV weekday mornings. Debating, screaming, Sucking your soul into a black hole of forced debate. Are you upset Skip Bayless is no more? Well, personally, I think I'd be quite a bit more upset about having a boil removed from my rumpus (laughs) than losing Skip Bayless on television. (laughs) And speaking of... Troy Aikman, there's another person who probably won't be sad that this fella doesn't have a platform anymore. You may remember back in the 90s that Skip wrote a book that suggested that Troy, well, let's put it this way, that Troy would have really liked the opening ceremonies at this year's Olympics. Claus is with us here on Hale Varsity. So, Claus, what you're saying is we shouldn't try to go see if uh, if Skip is available for a Hale Varsity Radio co-hosting spot? Well, as long as he gets is taking his nap at about 5 o'clock Central every Friday, I guess you guys do what you got to do to get ratings, but <laughs> I don't know how often you discuss how overrated LeBron is or how great the Cowboys are going to be this year. So he might not have a whole lot to add to the add to the conversation. Claus, get yourself. But a... he could get Christopher to the gym. He could get Christopher to the gym and build up those ankle muscles so he can ride in <laughs> golf carts safely again. Wow, love that, Claus. What we love you. It. Get yourself a helmet Sunday tonight, okay? It'll be a nice vanilla flavor. And enjoy it amongst friends. Claus, we love you. Appreciate you. Okay. There he goes. Claus Burton, he's imaginary. He wears red. And uh, we'll get into the Friday forecast soon enough. That's uh, college football picks each week once those uh, fire back up and some NFL as well. But we've kind of enjoyed a spring of Claus commentary. Yeah. And even brought his buddy Red in. 
Oh, the end of May. That was the best. <laughs> uh-huh. So, no, I, I love hearing from Claus, and he's he handles things with care. <laughs> Sup- surprisingly well handled today. Yeah I, yeah. I was, yeah. I was surprised. It's ready to go run out in traffic. Yeah, you, you, I, the look in your eyes, if you're not watching on stream, the look in your eyes when I started into that conversation was, let's not go there. I wasn't quite sure if we were going to do that one or not. And it worked out okay. Oh, I, I made the executive decision. I'm not the executive that's, here, that's but... That's fine. You, you made the executive decision. You, and you, you, the, the mic was mine. I was going to take my chance. We, we even got a, uh, a you know, a pairing. I'm, I'm sure Skip is pushing 70. He's in great shape. I do need to build up my ankle muscle because uh, this darn boot is on for another 17 days. But who's counting? I did ask uh, your buddy Nate yesterday about your your lowest score with the boot, the the fantastic. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was with me when I yeah, uh, and I asked him about. It. He said pure luck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can see uh, Nate the Great, phenomenal golfer, saying yeah, Schmidt was on one that day. Don't know what happened, but I played well. I best round of the year. We'll wind down a Friday. Hail Varsity. We're powered by Cornhead Lager. And now. And now, back to Hail Varsity Radio. And final time, weekend edition tomorrow, 7.45. Is, uh, you can find the show, Hail Varsity YouTube, Hail Varsity Radio, Twitter at HVarsity Radio. Steven has already called the shot. We love doing the starting five shout outs, but we also take your, uh, your for fun wagers on what time the show will actually start steven says 751 steven thank you for your faith in us being on time justin says put me down for 749 this is kind of fun to end the friday we always do time hacks and folks come in with their time hacks we were all there i had to reboot last week See, it's fun whenever you 750 make, for th- from three putt whenever you make our our lateness a a fun game as opposed to a point of shame. <laughs> it's a good strategy. <laughs> we try to avoid as much shame as humanly possible. Oh, we get enough shame whenever the show starts. It's always Walter in the stream. Very late again. Yeah, Walt, those, yeah, Walter's awesome. Walter from Philly. Now, I can't wait. Football season will be headed up to Herd Ant Sports Bar and Grill and going to dive into that bang bang sauce again. The boom boom slash bang bang sauce is second to none. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, the fried jalapenos. Yeah, I've been pickles. craving a pizza. I've been on a diet. I need a wi- I need some wings. Don't tempt me. I think what I'm going to do. Uh, Tiger Shark says 7:49 and says it's whiskey time. I'm going to pour me a, a giant Johnny Depp size of whiskey tonight. I've been a good kid for all week. Been a good boy. You I've been I've been it. all right. And I'm going to get me. The, I'm going to get me the thickest. New York strip that I can find in Lincoln. I'm not going to share. Might even go baked potato. Fire the grill up. Watch the German Shepherd want to play ball. Play some fetch. Do it up. You're just staring a hole right through me because you're on chicken and rice for night 74 in a row. You bastard. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, it's going to be great, though. It's uh, I went with the gochujang, kind of Korean-style chicken yet again this week. Got the kimchi. Uh, How, what is that? Kimchi? It's a spiced... It sounds incredible. It's, it's like a spicy fermented cabbage. Okay. It is delicious. It's, All right. It's awesome. Got a little bit of crunch to it, a little bit of tang to it. Skylar, I need you to be more specific. Skylar says, can I just say late? Does that count? Hmm. Hmm. Just, should we, I was going to say it'd be a fun little game to be early for once and have everybody be wrong, but Lord knows we're not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, house always wins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thanks for tuning in. Again, check out the podcast. Tell a friend. Give us a review. Good, bad, ugly. Subscribe. Uh, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play for Hail Varsity Radio. The podcast and uh, on YouTube, like and subscribe there. Hail Varsity YouTube can catch us, can catch our friends in the morning, Herd Ad Sports, uh, Damon and Ravi, all the great work the uh, the folks at Herd Ad do, too, with the press conference coverage. Uh, can go check out uh, Dylan Riola's full presser with uh, Herd Ad. Do that there. And uh, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, different platforms, and all of you along the Hail Varsity Radio Network. 
Appreciate you uh, for spending time with us as always. 745. Ish. What do we do? What, what, what should we do as a stake in a beer bet for the listeners if we don't hit 745 on the nose? Well, we're not going to. You don't think so? We can't muster up an on time. We were on time for Searles' golf tournament. At this point, we got to lean into it a little bit. A little bit. We, we can be on time during football All right. season. Yes, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, talk to you tomorrow, 745 Weekend Edition. Thanks.